Hi, have you ever wondered why reward-based training works so well to build a strong connection with your horse? Maybe it's because when we start connection training, we emulate many of the behaviours that horses use themselves to create their mutual bonds. Now, I'm not saying we speak horse, but we do use a few simple words, much like buying a drink in a country whose language you don't know. A few words and lots of gestures and you get your gin and tonic. This super little film from the Cloud Foundation shows an initial meeting between a young foal Echo and his new one-day-old sister Kixalot, or Cal. If we watch the video carefully, we see aspects of our training come to life in their interaction. There's a lot going on here. Horse behaviour and communication is complex and nuanced. So I'm going to focus on three aspects which we find in our first few sessions of connection training. These are firstly the innate drive that horses have to meet and bond with each other and it appears in domesticity they want to transfer that to us. They have a need to have the freedom to choose to engage or not in new situations and new people or other horses that they, they see. And also the importance of using the muzzle for exploration. So, as you start watching this video you'll see the gorgeous little Echo, full of curiosity, approach the mare and then her response to warn him off. Now her behaviour does not come from a need to establish dominance. It's known as resource guarding and it actually comes from her need to protect her foal. Echo understands this completely and moves away a little, but only a little, and then turns back as the mare starts to graze again. He is curious again when Kixalot approaches, but aware of the warning from the mare, he turns his head away in an appeasement gesture. Now, this head away is very familiar to us when we start reward-based training. The first lesson we teach is in manners, asking the horse not to mug us or our treat bag. We are resource guarding the goodies. And once our horses get that idea, they usually offer this sort of head away position. We can then mark that and reward it. It happens so naturally with most horses that it is actually quite easy to teach a horse not to mug and here you see the foundation of that behaviour already established in young foals. We're just building on what nature provides in the first place. Now we watch a sort of head dance between Echo and Cal as they show interest in each other. Echo keeps his distance and uses the head away when Cal moves her head towards him. As she turns away, he feels free to follow her round a bit and get a better look. We often have a similar sort of dance as our horses work out how to behave in the presence of our resource guarding. I believe that this physical back and forth we have with them provides one of the foundations of the connection. In the next part, Cal moves a bit away and follows her mother more closely. Echo, obviously still interested, starts to follow her. When we start teaching manners, we often bring in a bit of movement very early in the teaching. It's so easy for them to follow the goodies they want and are interested in, and it helps to diffuse the tension they may be feeling around trying not to mug for treats. You can see that Echo starts to look much more relaxed and feels freer to explore Cal following this little following movement. But if you look at Cal, you can see that she looks less happy. <clears throat> she looks a bit anxious, with tail clamped and her lips tight. Her ears are usually half back, and although she does stand to allow Echo to explore her, and occasionally turns her head to explore him, there is a general tension in her body language. When it gets too much for her, she moves away and gets a bit closer to the comfort of Mum again. This gives us the next clue to the success of our approach, training at liberty initially. While we're establishing the new bond with our horses, they may display similar anxious symptoms. Most of our domestic horses have had at least some aversive experience from humans and are rightly suspicious. And if we try and force the connection, try and force the bond with them while they are anxious, it will be harder for them to build trust with us. You can see that Cal is motivated to stay and be with Echo. She's curious too and she has an innate bond to, sorry, an innate drive to bond with her herd mates. But she's also a bit worried about it and her body language clearly shows this conflict. So, when it feels a bit much, she steps closer to mum and her safety. In terms of horse training, we recommend training your horse initially at liberty, in a place where he can get close to his companions and also have access to hay or grass or other food other than your treats. That way he's free to move away if he feels there's just too much tension and pressure, just as you see Cal do here.
But then look what happens. With the freedom to get safety and comfort from mum when she needs it, Cal makes the decision to turn round and engage with Echo much more confidently. He helps by offering head away and being non-threatening. She's still worried. Her tail is clamped and her hindquarters tucked, but she feels safe enough to indulge her curiosity. As the video goes on, we see the third part of our initial training, which is based on how horses explore their environment. Cal and Echo now get muzzle to muzzle and really engage with each other. Horses' muzzles are highly sensitive, with lots of whiskers and touch-sensitive skin. Their sense of smell is very powerful, so they'll be getting each other's scent, all of which satisfies their seeking systems, which drive sniffing behaviours. When we start training, we introduce the muzzle touching a target as the second behaviour we want after manners. It is so clearly a behaviour associated with learning about new situations that it's easy for horses to do and understand. It goes really well with the head away behaviour, and so both can be introduced together in the first session or so. Cal goes back to Mum, and Echo follows. They have a couple of more interactions, but suddenly Echo has a bounce and leaves abruptly. This causes Cal to pin her ears again, and it was possibly this growing sense of tension in her that made Echo bounce away. Certainly he has tension to release as he bucks and canters with his tail high. All that restraint and polite behaviour has built up the energy and he needs to go and release it. Being at liberty to do so, he heads back to the main herd. Echo and Kixalot have had a really successful first encounter and are well on their way to creating a strong lifetime bond. These short and sweet sessions are always the best and again we try and copy that in our training. I love this video. It shows that we are using innate behaviours in our introductory sessions. This makes it very easy for our horses to understand our needs and gets the training off to a successful start. It also provides the emotional foundation for strong friendship bond between us and our horses, which creates the connection we want for life. I'd like to thank the Cloud Foundation for their great work and for making these excellent videos freely available to watch. Please support their work by joining us in making a donation to their charity at thecloudfoundation.org. Thanks very much.